What's going on guys? Tokes here, back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about a great one, a very controversial topic per se, on the 6 Gen Camaros. If any of you guys are on the Facebook pages or the forums, you'll realize that there's a lot of talk about force induction on the Camaros. There's a lot of talk on that it's bad, a lot of people say it's fine. So I want to go over what I have learned from, like good shops, reliable shops, and also what I have went through personally as I was a boosted stock motor 6 gen. So first things first, when it comes to talking about boosted 6 gens, there's different superchargers you can do, or you could tur turbocharge it too. So obviously you have the Pro Charger, which is a centrifugal supercharger, and then you also have the root style blowers, which would be your Magnuson 2650, your Edelbrocks, your Whipples, and your stock ported blowers like the LT4 blower. Then you also have turbos, and they all each play a different factor into how the car is going to perform. So as you can see, I chose the Pro Charger. The reason I chose the Pro Charger is because I love the sound of it. With this big race blow off valve right here, it just pushes out a bunch of air. It sounds crazy. And just the Pro Charger idle is my favorite thing to hear. So that's why I chose the Pro Charger over the other two styles, the turbo or a root style blower. If I were to do it again and I wanted to be fast, I would probably choose a Magnuson 2650 on an automatic car, but I'm manual. So I wanted to do the Pro Charger cam route, see how that went. When it comes to boosting the six gen on the stock motors, you need more than just a supercharger to efficiently do it. You're going to want to do injectors, high pressure fuel pump, the low pressure fuel pump, and then you're also going to want to do meth. So I have the Elki control kit. You just run it all right through here. It's all in the passenger side right here, the, the fender, and you use the windshield washer as it. And so what I did is I ran 50-50 the water meth from snow meth because I wanted to use it for cooling. I didn't want to run any risk of the car blowing up. And the reason you run meth is so you can keep the temps down. Some people start to run into issues is when things are too hot and the piston rings butt up and then just pop. Piston rings are on there tight from factory. So heat help, does not help it at all. And that's what usually causes the issue. So as you see, proper fueling is key. Without proper fueling, you run into the risk of running the car lean and having issues. You don't want that to happen. So spend the money on the LT4 fuel stuff. All you have to do to find it is you can call a GM dealership or a Chevy dealership, anything of that sort, get the part number for the ZL1 stuff and purchase it on like gmpartsoutlet.com. You can buy it from shops, but shops usually charge a markup on it as they get it for the same price as the GM dealerships so and then they try to make money on it. So I ended up spending, I think 1200 total for everything on my car for the the fuel system, which is a lot cheaper. If you look online, some, think, some places are charging $2,000 for this fuel system. So as long as with the fuel system, I also use meth. I do not use the meth for fuel when I was stock, stock motor. I didn't, now I do because I'm built motor and I'm, I, I'm not as worried about heat. I am worried about heat, but I can use it more for fuel now since it's safer that I have upgraded pistons and rods. So you use the 50-50 meth. What I did is I did a single M10 nozzle from Elki Control, mounted it right up here, and I used it all for just cooling. It helped keep the car cool whenever I was doing pulls and everything. It made sure my, my IATs were not getting too high as that is the issue with these cars is when stuff likes to go, is when you have high IAT temps. And another main thing is this right here, the Mighty Mouse vented catch can. You need a vented catch can for these cars. People say you don't. I personally believe you do. The shops that I've talked to have all said they always run them on their stock motor cars because the issue seems to happen is these cars without crank, proper crankcase ventilation will push out the front seal, which is down there. Push out the front seal. And once you push out the front seal, you start leaking oil everywhere. And usually that means something's wrong with your motor if you're pushing out a front seal. So to avoid that, I also upgraded to the LS3 front seal when I installed my Pro Charger. It's a lot thicker gasket. Some places like to do it. Some places say you can get away with the LT1. 
I just preferred the thicker one since I was doing the crankcase ventilation. So I did that and I had no issues at all. Lastly, you need to find a shop that knows how to tune this stuff. You, every tuner is gonna say they know how to tune it. That's not true at all. There are big shops out there that know how to tune LTs. They are different than LS motors. They're not as easy to tune. They're a lot harder to tune with this direct injection and boosted. So you gotta find the proper tuner. A reputable shop can push these cars to 700 wheel. That is like the threshold that every shop seems to have. Safely, you can make 700 wheel on stock bottom end. There's obviously people that make more and have no issues. There's all obviously people that made less and had issues. So it all comes down to a lot of factors when it, when, it, when it comes to boosting your car. But you need a proper tuner. So for my tuner, I use Dr. Phil through K-Tech and my pistons came out perfect. I'll actually walk into my backyard. I still have my stock pistons and rods and I'll show you what they look like. They are perfect. So it's a mess where this is. I just kind of store them. But so here are my stock pistons. Every ring looked perfect. There's really no obviously noticeable marks on the pistons. So all the pistons look good, obviously typical carbon, carbon buildup. And then not to mention these things have been sitting outside for a good amount of time now. And every piston looks like this. Every one of my pistons still looked like brand new. All the cross hatching was in the engine block when I pulled them, cross hatching was perfect. It just, there, there was nothing wrong at all with the pistons. I just wanted to turn up the power more and I also wanted to make it safer just for peace of mind. I personally didn't like the thought of thinking that it could blow up. So I ended up upgrading the pistons and rods. So for reference, my car made 610 to the rear wheels on my stock motor setup. That's probably about 630, 640 on any other dyno. Uh, the dyno at K-Tech reads a little bit lower little they tune it how it's supposed to be so it, it gives you the proper dyno numbers not inflated ones so mine made 610 and i had no issues at all i drove the car for about 7,000, maybe 8,000 miles and everything was perfect never skipped a beat anything when it was stock motor another thing worth mentioning when it comes to boosting these cars is when people blow them up it tend to, tends to be when they're hot lapping it so say if you're at the track or something uh, either a road course or the drag strip. If you're just constantly beating on it, not letting it cool off and everything, you're gonna run into issues. You can run into issues with a built motor doing that. So constantly hot lapping it like that is gonna have issues. And say you're sitting in rush hour traffic or whatever. If you're sitting in rush hour traffic for 30 minutes and then you just floor it right away, it, the car's heat soaked and you, you run the risk of running into more issues because of that. So whoever tells you that you can't boost these, they're not telling the truth. Uh, most of the time, I've noticed on these Camaro forms, it's people that haven't even boosted the car or have no knowledge of boosting the car when it comes to saying, oh no, you can't boost it, you need to do pistons and rods, you need to do drop-ins, you need to upgrade stuff. That's not true. Um, you could talk to plenty of people like myself and others that have ran our car's perfectly fine, beat on them, and had no issues at all. It seems to be that people just get this notion from other people on the forum saying, oh, I blew mine up doing this, um, that you need to do pistons and rods. So they just see what other people say and they just go on with it. That's the whole reason I actually wanted to make this video is because of people like that. It, it frustrates me every time I see it. I'm not gonna sit there and argue with them on Facebook because I could care less, but I always tell people, don't listen to these people and the people that have had issues, there's something you did wrong or you just had bad luck with the car. Cause I know sometimes the, the lifters will collapse um, and then causes other issues to go with the motor. And that's not necessarily because of it's boosted. There's been stock lifters to collapse on bolt on cars and even stock cars because they're the stupid DOD ones. If you wanna boost these cars the proper way, you need to spend money. You can't cheap out and just try to do the cheapest thing possible. You can do it, but you run the risk of blowing your motor and you don't want to do that. So don't cheap out when it comes to boosting your car. Add it all up. It's not the cheapest thing to do. Fuel system, 1200. Meth, 800. So right there, you're at two grand. And then you also have to add in the blower cost, depending on the blower you go with. Maggie's are going to be like 7,000. Pro Charger, be anywhere from 5,000 for a P1SC. 
to anywhere up to 10,000 for the F1A. It all depends on how you spec it. So when you're going over this, make sure you add all the cost up beforehand so you know if you really want to do it. Because these cars are stout with just heads, cam, intake. If I were to do it, I would personally do a heads cam intake build over just a slapping on a supercharger. So I wouldn't just slap on a P1SC to this car. I would do a heads cam intake and that way it's about the same price as the P1SC but then I don't have to do the fuel system and it'll run a lot better with the NA power curve because these things are monsters NA. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video about me trying to educate you guys on boosting stock bottom end LT1 cars. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Also, you can always talk to me on Instagram. I always respond there. My Instagram is just the same as my YouTube, TokesSS. Just hit me up on there. I'll get back to you whenever I get the message request and I'll answer any questions. If you ever need any help, if you're in the Michigan area or whatever also, use KTech, Dr. Phil, for tuning. Like I said, he tuned my car perfect and I want everyone else to have the same perfect tune that I had. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you next time.